your boy definitely makes mistakes. And I made a big mistake and it has to involve this right here. What's going on guys? So today I wanted to give you guys an update on Avalanche, kind of how the socialization process is going. Um, updates on a couple of other things, really, really cool, interesting things happening around the room. This one's kind of all over, but it should be a fun vlog. Stay tuned guys. So like others have said and suggested, I need to just make more of an effort to just spend more time here in the room, just doing whatnot. I have to do some work stuff or some editing stuff. Just chilling here in front of the enclosure and letting him see me. I've been doing it more and more and he has obviously more frequently come out and does tend to kind of investigate sometimes. He's, you can see he's kind of moving around, getting a little bit freaked out with the camera. He is not a fan of the camera, guys. I can tell you that right now because it does look like a giant eye but there he is. If you guys can see all those dubias I put in there, he munched and he ate them all. This guy loves his insects. I'm very glad that he's keen on insects and not just meats and eggs. I finally did get him to eat some chicken, uh, some chopped up chick he actually did take. Finally, it was confirmed that he ate it and he, of course, is taking egg. So we're just, you know, continually working on getting him that varied diet that will keep him super stimulated and super healthy here in captivity. I figured out his secret weakness and I'm about to show y'all right now. Also, this plan is not doing too hot. So everybody has their guilty pleasure, right? I figured out what Avalanche's was. Eggs, baby. So we got him, I'm not gonna give him the whole thing because I don't think he'll eat the whole thing. But we got him four little triangles, it's like pizza slices. So I'm gonna put this scrambled egg in here. Two days straight, he's loved it. Um, I've put it in there with some dubias. He's eaten everything. He's been eating very, very good lately uh, inside this enclosure. So here's kind of the method that I use. So he's kind of freaked out with the camera, but when you open up, you see he gets a little bit inquisitive, a little bit nervous, but he's just wondering what's going on. So what I like to do, pretty, pretty simple, right? Is I'll take the food cup and he knows that the food comes in the food cup, right? So I'll just take the food cup ordinarily I take the food out first. So now he knows the food cup's going in. Drop it in and I'll take these tongs and I'll show him me putting the food into the cup. So subconsciously he's going to associate whatever goes into the cup is food. Whatever is bringing the food into the cup, these tongs, hopefully that they bring the food. So there we go. And just shut it. That's all we really have to do. All right guys different clothes, different day. I record these videos over multiple days. It's just kind of how I do it. Now, one of, if not the best, the only way to tame your monitor, I have found, is to try and garner a relationship with your lizard, right? Now, what's the best way to create a relationship with your lizard or with another being? It's food, okay? What better way to bond than to share a meal with your monitor lizards? Now, of course, Blue is not going to be getting this. This is fish and rice. This is my pre-workout meal before I go lift. But I do have some food for Blue. So we're going to take him out. We're going to feed him. And we're going to just eat together and see, see how this strengthens our bond. There we go, guys. There we go. There's the dubias. Let's go ahead and let this guy out. There he goes. You know, I'm just going to sit right here and chill with him while he eats. I'm gonna eat, you know. Guys, this is great bonding. How many of you guys can really say you eat dinner with your monitor lizards, right? Like he's just, he's feasting. I'm chilling. This is a good day. Look at this bond we're developing, guys. Look at how great of a bond we have because we eat together. He's looking for more. I don't have more for you. Now he's gonna start coming after my food. And I don't want him to do that. Okay, you see? You see? He wants mine now. All right, guys, so we just finished shoulders. I didn't film in there because, you know, there's a lot of people. And, uh, I mean, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I don't make gym videos, man. I don't want to be that guy. Yeah, I just wanted to do this kind of like accountability for myself as well. I've been bulking for like, I mean, I was, I, I've been bulking like for the last kind of year, I guess, because we've been working out like a year and a half at this point, but I'm bulking for a year. 
So I'm gonna start cutting soon, like a, like half a month. So what do you have to say about the gym? Like, what's what's your vision? What's I don't want to be interviewed. Flex. Ooh. I tend to think, I like to think that I am pretty well versed in the area of, you know, animals, plants, nature. But your boy makes mistakes. Your boy definitely makes mistakes. And I made a big mistake. It was a mistake that I actually made on camera. And it has to involve this right here. Now, to a lot of you guys, you guys can identify what this is. This is what I now know is a Monstera Deliciosa. And I didn't know that up until a couple minutes ago. You guys remember that plant that I put in Avalanche's old enclosure right up at the top? And I was like, you know, it's a, it's a throwaway plant. It's an old plant. I thought it was a Philodendron or something. I didn't know. Turns out it was a Monstera. I'd given the whole plant to blue, but I saved this little clipping because I was like, you know what? Maybe I grow it in some water. We'll just see what happens. So I stuck it in a bowl of water on a shelf in the living room. This scabbed over and sprouted roots. I looked at it and I was like, hey, it's probably time for me to try and plant this thing. I should probably figure out what it is. So I hit up my boy, Queasy man. And I'm like, you know, bro, what is this? And he's like, bro, that's a Monstera. And I was like, are you serious? I thought it was a Philodendron. Apparently the leaves are very Philodendron and Pothos-like when they're young, but not so much when they're older. And these things get massive. So I'm gonna try and put it in the McCrea enclosure, in Avalanche's enclosure. I'm gonna put it in a pot. If you guys are enjoying this video currently, make sure you go down there, hit that subscribe button. I know it's a bunch of different clips and I'm wearing like different shirts. Whoever can tell me, first person to comment how many times I've changed my shirt, I will pin your comment. First person to do it. Not how many shirts I've worn, how many times I changed my shirt. First step is you need a pot. Yeah, I know this is an ugly pot. It's blue, but blue monitor, blue plant, or <laughs> blue monitor, blue pot. This is just for temporary, guys. Once you have about this much, it's what I usually like to start with. Keep in mind, I've never actually planted a Monstera before. And apparently, I don't even know what they look like. So, this one did have roots, as you can see. So, we're going to plant it. I'm going to prop the leaves up on this chair for right now. So, give it some support while I get some more dirt. So here, you guys can't even see, but here's one cup of dirt going in, a little bit more going on to really fill it out. And then I'm going to slowly, gently pat it in just like this. Keep in mind, don't do what I'm doing unless this is the right way. I've never planted a Monstera again. I've never even been able to successfully identify one. Do with that information what you will, hopefully this thing survives. I take my little mister, gonna give her some water. Spray the leaves a little bit as well. Now the final step is I like to take some leaf litter on my plants and put it on the top. This makes a mess on the floor, yes. This is going to trap in a lot of that moisture. So this is like leaf litter, sphagnum moss, all that kind of stuff that would make up a forest floor. Something tells me that that's not good. Something tells me those things need support. So to combat this problem, I don't know how well this is gonna work, but I've got these two little wooden dowels. I'm gonna try and stick them inside here and zip tie these to the dowels just for some support. So Avalanche is in there. I might be able to actually sneak this in here. But um, I just wanna show you guys how everything's growing in here so far. Not amazing. Um, this pothos is doing decent. He kind of tramples it though. So I did just trim some overhangs off and replant them. This is the Swiss cheese. And it's, this is a whole vine. It's growing a whole vine. As you guys can see, this is doing decent, man. This is actually doing decent. There's another piece of Swiss cheese back there that's killing it man right here that's doing super good <laughs> I actually haven't even ever seen that up close bird's nest living I'm thinking of putting it here in this back corner it's kind of an area he doesn't really go too much and it gives it some nice coverage there's the basking light right there I would like to put it over here but there's just too much clutter now I'm keeping it in a pot so I can transplant it later because this is not his permanent enclosure. I put it in, this is the only place it would really fit. I tried my best to keep the leaves in the light. It's in the corner, I put a stick there so nothing really gets on that area of it. I might probably make some changes to this later. I wanted to put it back there, but 
the leaves would be one in the basking spot, one in a highly trafficked area. So aside from like just hanging out in here with him, I've also been trying to just work inside the enclosure without really touching him. I've kind of toned back on, on just touching him straight up because he does seem to get a little bit nervous still. Um, what's really messing me up is that this enclosure is on the floor. Once he is up high, I assume this is going to be a night and day difference. But you can see he's just a little bit wary. I assume when I open the enclosure, he's going to become even a little bit more wary. But he's going to be nice and gentle with him. And I'm not really even going to touch the dude, to be honest. I want him to get used to me in his space not directly touching him. You can see his feet are shedding out. He is just so beautiful. You can see the... I was going to uh, point out how good his weight was looking, but he uh, got a little bit nervous. Well guys, this unfortunately is just part of the process. Sometimes they're gonna get a little bit spooked and go for cover. But what's important is that you know you don't force yourself on the animal see he's still peeking his head out wondering what's going on but you don't force yourself on the animal so if he doesn't want to come interact with me I'm not gonna force him to come interact with me I'm not gonna grab him um, I'm not gonna walk him through my hands I'm just gonna simply gonna give this enclosure a nice spray down for the night and then I will be on my way the thing about monitors is that he's gonna go ahead and come out you don't want their environments to always be soaking wet right but what I've learned um, you know, there's been more and more people going to Batanta and kind of documenting what goes on there. And what I've learned is that it's very, very wet there. So while I do give him a dry out period during the day, I do give him two heavy spray downs a day. Since I don't have the Mist King set up in his enclosure right now, I will give my blue tree monitor two pretty heavy spray downs to kind of simulate and mimic this. Now there is a wet and dry season in Batanta. Um, I cooled my room down a little bit, but not enough to where I'm going to stop spraying him. He seems to actually enjoy when I spray him. Like he doesn't actually, he doesn't hate it, which is cool. Because Blue is not a huge fan of being sprayed directly. But Avalanche actually enjoys it. And this is kind of helping us bond, I would say. But hey, look at his body. His body weight is amazing. Look at that, nice and trim. He's just watching the camera. He hates the camera. He does like to sit right under here. So this basking right here is in the, uh, you know, the 130s. This right up here is right at about 100 degrees. He loves to sit up here. They don't like it as hot as other monitors. Down here on the floor, it's mid 70s. And then everywhere else, it's mid 80s a little bit cooler in there warmer inside of there and then right here he will hide in this and get heat while he basks now as a reptile keeper i know you're not supposed to have favorites but this is by far the most favorite reptile i've ever kept because how could he not be what a smoke show Ooh, somebody is looking absolutely fabulous man wow i just dude i just seriously just can't get enough of them i need more tree monitors. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you go down there, you hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit the like button, share this video, leave a comment, all that good stuff. It only take you about 30 seconds, but it really does mean the world. It helps this channel be able to, you know, get out and, and whatnot. Again, whoever can tell me how many times I changed shirts this video, not how many shirts I wore, how many times I changed a shirt, I will pin your comment, first person to say it. I got a friendly little challenge going on with some of the boys. The goal for this month, by the end of February, 3,800 subscribers. So we have less than 500. We're like four something away. You know, they've been saying that we can't do it. They've been saying the Will Exotic family is weak, that we're weak, that we don't love each other, we don't support each other. Let's prove them wrong, guys. Let's prove them wrong.